Welcome to episode two of firstoffthebike.com's pop-up show here at Ironman Cairns. We're back at the beautiful Salt House here in Cairns, Tim Bradley and Phil Rockner. We uh, had the good fortune today of going down to the press conference and seeing what the pros were talking about. It was an open air press conference and uh, the pros were quite happy to take questions from both journos who were there and also the public who were just milling about the expo and uh, maybe having a bit of a glimpse at uh, some of the people they look up to in the sport. The usual panel, Tim Bradley of, uh, of Athletes, we had uh, a good cross section from the top end in Cam Brown, the elder states, and all the way through to the young up and comers. Uh, I shouldn't say young up and comers, but the newer, longer racing uh, athletes in uh, Sticks Carterfield. For you, anything stand out for you overall? Uh, cheese Brownie looks fit. You know, we've, we've spoken about. Uh, he's a Hellraiser. We've, he's, a, well, he's a Hellraiser. He's a Hellraiser, is he? He is a very calm and measured athlete. <laughs> Boy, isn't he? But. This is the fittest I've ever seen him in the last couple of seasons. You know, we saw him at Ironman New Zealand earlier this year. He looked great there, but I think he even looks better now. Yeah. You know, he said he's been training on the Gold Coast for a couple of weeks leading up to this race, so he's acclimatised to the hot weather. Uh, Tim Burke was going to have to watch out because Brownie looks fit. Absolutely, and knows this course and races it yeah, well. He has. Caroline Steffen, too, for mine. He, she's just been up and about since uh, she moved over to Camp Macca, um, and she spoke to uh, the crowd and spoke to the journos and she seemed like she was very happy and upbeat as uh, kind of a new version of, of Caroline Steph and I like to say that because she is such a uh, wonderfully bubbly athlete off the field and uh, certainly is uh, one of the strongest ones. She did say it wasn't going to be her A race uh, this weekend yeah. which was interesting. Yeah she, she knows where she's at this time of the year. She knows she's got Roth and then she's got Kona um, as her two goal races and then likely given her relationship with Challenge we'll probably see her at Bahrain at the end of the year should she pull up well from Kona so it's uh, it's a, it's a big one for Caroline for just getting through the race uninjured and getting through it unharmed with Roth so close. Absolutely. It's certainly uh, a big day for all the locals who came out to watch this press conference. And Tim, we caught up with uh, Liz Blatchford, who was third in Kona last year. What an amazing debut season on yeah. the Ironman circuit. We had a quick chat to her about where her ankle was in terms of the, the healing process and where she was, and also a little bit about the team that she's in, the team you place. Yeah, my ankle's fine. It's been good now for a good sort of six to eight weeks. So I've been back running and all into it. Um, I think, yeah, it's just when you take time off, it slows you down for a while. But yeah, I've been running well in training. So hopefully have a good run on Sunday. Taking, like handing over a bit of that control. I was always wary, like you say, going from individual into a team environment when you're not always in control of things so much. But um, they're really, fantastic like really professional and just allowing us to do exactly what we want and assisting us in any way we can so it's been fantastic it's exceeded my expectations and um, yeah I'm really excited to have the team backing me. Tim uh, seems like she's all good doesn't she ready to go for this one? Yeah I mean she said she's been running for six to eight weeks now and you've got to take her on her word that her ankle's feeling fine and you know she wouldn't be putting herself through an Ironman distance race if she didn't think she was uh, you know physically able to get through it. Well that's right and uh, when uh, the press conference is all said and done too we collared uh, Brad Carterfelt, two-time Olympian and uh, one of the rising stars of the 70.3 world. We had a chat to him about uh, his time at uh, Team Aeromax and also about the change in course, which caused a little bit of controversy when it was announced earlier this year. What's One Direction, the band? Because I'm a singing. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Burks, we don't see Burks too much because he stays home and plays with, his, uh, plays with his little pug, which is a little bit embarrassing, to be honest. It's a terrible dog. But... Um, yeah, no, we, we, we go head to head quite a bit and uh, have a lot of fun with it. Um, we don't race too much, get too serious. Um, you know, the boys sometimes take it serious, especially Burks, um, but uh, that's when he turns up to training. But um, no, it's a good little group I enjoy. It's a great spot, Lennox, uh, very beautiful. Um, you know, I'm from the country, Wagga Wagga, so it's nice to train in a, a small location. Obviously, Wagga's on the coast, but um, Lennox has got everything you need there and uh, very happy with the move. Haven't actually been out to Palm Cove yet, but it's, um, I mean, Yorkie's knob and everything last year was very nice. So, that, you know, they tell me the swim course is uh, beautiful. Um, you know, I love it around here as well. And um, I think coming back into the crowd and, you know, for all the spectators to see us sort of coming off the bike here and, um, you know, they can see us a couple of times on the run at least. And I think that's, um, I think that's good for the, for the race, 70.3 and Ironman. I think it's great. So um, probably makes it more exciting as well. And, uh I think, yeah, coming back in, just as I said before, with that headwind, I think it's you know certainly going to split up. Well, Stixie looks uh, focused, he's calm, and just a little bit of venom for the Aeromax boys. Interesting, he really pointed out, and one thing Courtney Atkinson also pointed out in the press conference, Phil, was the 
uh, the headwind that they're going to face coming back into town. If the conditions stay as they are and as they were last year, they're going to have a fierce headwind for that last 50k on the bike, which could, I mean, when you've got guys like Joey Lamp, okay. you've got uh, Fatel, uh, Appleton, Dello. Dello, massive names of this sport, not just in Australia, but globally. Mm. Wow, it's going to be on. That that 50k into the headwind is going to be an absolute chop fest, and I can't wait for it. Yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting. Well, that's all we've got time for for episode two of our pop-up show here at Ironman Cairns. Thanks again to the beautiful people of Pure Blonde, and uh, we'll be having a little bit of a Twitter shout tonight. If you're floating around, come on down and see us here at the Salt House, but also want to thank the Salt House too for putting yeah. us up.